In this video we'll be looking at what is the lowest shutter speed that you can set on your DJI Osmo Action 4 in order to get the best stabilization in low light and not get that ghosting. Oh yeah, let's go. Now one of the best features of every action camera is its image stabilization and it's done electronically with the help of a little bit of processing. Now for that to work smoothly you need to have clear and sharp images. So if the shutter speed is too slow and you have too much motion blur, well then the camera is going to have trouble stitching the frames together and making a very smooth video because it doesn't know how to put one frame on top of the other because they're all blurry. So we need to figure out what is the lowest shutter speed depending on how fast we move and how fast things are happening and how much you're shaking the camera in order to get still good enough images for the stabilizer to work. Now I'm using the DJI Osmo Action 4 and this has Rocksteady 3 point something or whatever and it's actually pretty good but it does suffer in low light. Now in contrast to system cameras like the one I'm using over here, the Alpha 7 IV from Sony, which has in-body image stabilization, in other words, the sensor is floating in mid-air in a magnetic field and it's counteracting all the shakes that I'm producing as I'm moving the camera. These cameras only have electronic stabilization, which means that the camera's processor is moving the frames around as it's trying to stabilize the image. This is why you will always have a bit of a crop on these cameras because that extra space and extra real estate is needed for the frames to be shuffled around. Now I'm gonna show you a demonstration which is kind of spooky. Ha! <laughs> okay. Okay, so here we are on the DJI Osmo Action 4 and I've set my camera down on a ledge so it's not moving. Now I'm going to grab the camera and pan it around really quickly and notice how the camera is going to start moving before I even grab it. Did you notice it? Okay, so it's getting quite dark which means that it's time to start testing. This first test doesn't make any sense because my shutter speed is set to 1 25th of a second and it's kind of a dreamy thing. But that's what you can expect if your shutter speed is really too slow. Okay, this is now the cinematic shutter speed, the 1 50th of a second. Now this is cool if the camera is stationary, you're not moving it around and you're going to get that true to life motion blur like you see over here as I'm waving my hand and if you're recording with 25 or 24 frames per second and you pan the camera around it's going to be a smoother sensation because the motion blur is going to blur all the images together it's not going to be choppy and digital like but for the stabilizer it's probably too slow Now next up is 1 80th of a second shutter speed. This one is faster, therefore there's going to be less motion blur, but 1 80th of a second still produces motion blur. The question is only, can the camera handle the electronic stabilization? Now I am deliberately shaking the camera as I'm doing this because you know I'm trying to simulate some sort of action scene because here you can see there's there's not a lot of action happening. Okay this next one is one one hundredth of a second and I actually had to raise my ISO because it's getting well it's getting dark. So currently I'm shooting at 1600 ISO and one one hundredth of a second shutter speed. I am recording all of this with D-Log M and I'm doing post-production color grading with the official DJI Osmo Action LUT, which as always is linked down in the description. This could be just the minimum shutter speed to still make this thing work. So if I'm going to shake the camera around and walk very erratically, then it should be kind of okay. Maybe do a little bit of a running. You know, I feel like an idiot running with the camera just in my hand and if there's anybody watching me here, they probably think I'm an idiot as well. You know, but that's what we have to do to test this thing out. So now I'm going to slowly start increasing the shutter speed. This time it's 1 120th of a second, so slightly faster than before. And of course my ISO is already maxed out at 1600, so chances are I'm gonna have to raise it even higher so the image is going to get noisy 
But how does the stabilizer work with this? one one hundredth and twentieth of a second. So I am walking like an angry person right now, which is not the way you would want to walk and talk to a camera like this. Okay, one hundred and sixtieth of a second. Shutter speed and the ISO is 3200. So this is probably as far as I would push my ISO on a small sensor camera like this. Anything beyond this is kind of not controllable, even in post-production. And I'm not even going to try the low light enhanced thing that this camera has because it just just makes the image dark and it doesn't do much for the quality so 160th of a second like i'm literally walking back and forth over here which is really stupid i mean this should now be much better i'm expecting everything from one one hundredth of a second and faster to be good enough for a talking and walking kind of scenario. And finally, one two hundredth of a second shutter speed. This is as far as I'm going to go because I know that everything beyond this is going to produce nice images and well, the stabilizer is going to be okay. But the shutter speed this time around is 6400. So the noise is also going to interfere a bit with how the camera stitches images together into a smooth video file. Yeah, I know, I'm guessing this is going to be like, you know, like really fast panning, jumping, you know, tilting the camera around, so, you know, stabilizer. Now I am using just the default Rocksteady, so not Rocksteady Plus, not horizon leveling, because it doesn't make that big of a difference. The camera only needs to crop in a little bit more, and I pretty much never use those other settings. But if it works with this, you know, just the default Rocksteady, then it's going to work with every other as well. So you guys saw the video files, now we're going to go into a different, even darker setting and we'll really start pixel peeping to see which shutter speed is the minimum that is still usable for the DJI Osmo Action 4 for handheld vlogging. I'm gonna fire up DaVinci Resolve and we'll, we'll start cracking together. Okay, so let's start off first with 1 25th of a second. Now this is really not okay because it's shaking like crazy. Just look at these lights over here. This is really too slow for the action camera to actually do some proper stabilizing. Now let's go to that magical 1 50th of a second shutter speed and here you can also see how the lights are flickering and this is what happens when people put an ND filter on their action camera and try to get the cinematic motion blur with that 1 50th of a second but then the stabilizer starts messing things up and this is typically what you see in those types of videos. Now we're at 1 80th of a second shutter speed and you can see it got a little bit darker because my ISO is locked to I think 1600 so it's getting darker but I am going to have to raise the ISO later on but 1 80th of a second no, it looks okay you see a little bit of flashing over here as the video is playing back but you know it's just barely usable. Okay, next up is one one hundredth of a second. Now this is the minimum that I typically use and I think here I've raised the ISO to 3200 and this actually looks quite okay. I mean I'm just walking normally and you know there's no flickering of the lights so one hundredth of a second is good. Now one hundred and twentieth of a second I'm starting to walk a little bit more on the sideways and then one sixtieth of a second raising the ISO and then right at the end we will get to one two hundredth of a second. Here the ISO is I think 6400 so this is way too much for the action camera and these video files are not color graded this is D log M straight out of the camera. So I think honestly one one hundredth of a second is actually the minimum you would want to go and again comparison to that cinematic one fiftieth yeah this is just like no 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 that's definitely not usable for electronic stabilization okay so some final thoughts on this topic i think that one eightieth of a second is the bare minimum shutter speed that you would want to use for a handheld vlog on the dji osmo action 4 and pretty much on any other action camera because they all work pretty much in the same way but i would suggest using that one hundredth of a second just to be sure and that's the minimum shutter speed that i always use whenever i'm using this camera and for those of you who want to use your new ND filters that you bought for the DJI Osmo Action. Well, if you want to use the 1 50th of a second shutter speed, then I would suggest to put this camera somewhere stationary and then do like a talking head video with the camera not moving. And then you can even turn off the Rocksteady stabilizer and get even a wider shot. And all the really popular vlogging YouTubers, you know, have their cameras fixed somewhere and it just looks so much better. I have to learn something from that. So if you have any comments or questions, 
questions, please leave that down below. I will leave you with the videos that we just went through, this time fully color graded and denoised in DaVinci Resolve and you can see the full low light potential of this camera and you can also see how the slow shutter speed really affects the image stabilization. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and hit the like button for the algorithm. It really does help. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.